Like I was saying, my first Sifu, Jose Grados, man. This is his top student, his brother right here. <laughs> and I met Grados back in the um, in the 80s, man. Um, in the clubs downtown. In Latin yeah, all those, yeah, all the clubs. Be. Didn't you say he was like the dude that he would beat people up? He was like the guy who would, like, he was like the enforcer? Yeah, but see, Grados was cool, man. You know what I'm saying? He was known for what he did. He didn't need to really, you know, like boast. Well, maybe he told me that. Let me tell you. I hung out with him for like four years before I even knew he was into the arts. Oh, yeah? I didn't find out until I moved in with him. This is why I had so much respect for him. And we hung out Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for like weeks, man. I'm talking about for like three, four years in a row, just meeting at the train station and going to the clubs. That's crazy because Grados used to talk to me about it. He's like, I used to have a student. He lived with me for a year. I trained him to fight some more time. Dude, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, that's yeah, so yeah, dope. Yeah, I never yeah, met yeah, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, I used to go around, man, with the Jeep uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. going in on the Muay Thai dudes. All them dudes just testing my shit because he told me, yo, you got to get out there now. You got to play with dudes, man. You know, because I asked him, yo, you think I'm going to be good? How good am I? Yo, we got to get out there because it wasn't just Win Chun. Sure. You know, he gave me the Seelum Tao. I asked him for Chun Q. He was like, you don't even know what you got. <laughs> I'm not sure. gonna give you the rest of that shit, so I, I had to run with it, man. Nah, cause when Chun is in sections, you gotta learn a little, a little piece first, fix it, then move on to the next piece. It's like go to the house. Mm -hmm. If the foundation isn't good, you cannot put the deck of floor. Listen, this is why. <laughs> this, is, this is why a lot of people um, don't understand what Bruce. Bruce didn't wasn't able to complete the house. He started it, no. right? but he wasn't able to complete it. Man. Yeah, he had a, a house on the side, right? But a different system, and another house on the side. You could do that after you build a full house. With your prime system, then you can start adding the, the guest house. Correct, correct. You can start adding the, the backyard, the pool, the this, the that, the furniture, the electricity, all that shit, all the, all the, the salt and pepper, you add that later. But you have to learn your base. If Wing Chun is your base, that's your base. If Black is your base, that's your base. You just add to your base. You don't have to stop what you're doing, go back here and learn something from the ground up. No. You keep what you got, move over, and be like, all right, what can I learn with what I have? How can I apply this to what I do? And then you make that yours. That's how you make it work. So it's not that you can't do any different stuff. It's just that you have to know what's your base. And for guys out there, you know, that, that, you know, that, that study other arts, um, you know, that promote other arts, man, the reason why we focus so much on Wing Chun is because, you know, the closer you get to the target, you know, this is where the real damage is done. You know, it's safe to hit out here, like they say in boxing, hit and not get hit. You know, it's safe to, you know, damage them with kicks, but the real, to do the real damage, you got to get inside there and control them. And the closer you get to the, to the target, this is where the Wing Chun is, is most effective, is for, for close range, man. We're not looking to be out here. You know? And the Chi style again, is just to, for you to protect and learn how to control and master, right? The, yep. Up close. The center line. And learn how to manipulate it on the fly. <laughs> Because you're manipulating it on the see, I took his center line, right? Right. I took it again. Right. See, he's offline. So you can choose mad different things to do at any time to cap to counter the line. And I'm just cons right. if you notice, I step every single time. Right. Because you have to really step to position, step to position. There's no way this is gonna be. I can't. Like if I'm not moving around right. enough to get that hook off to get the, I'm not gonna be able to get correct. it. That's the dummy level, correct? Yeah, that's, that's just doing the dummy. Around the dummy. I just start going around the dummy. Correct. So you, you always try to get to the 45. You see to your Chum Q, to your Bill G and your dummy. So you gotta, it's, it's a complete system, man. A lot of people have yet to complete the system, man. This is why I think yeah. Wing Chun gets so, um, a bad reputation in the martial arts community. Because guys have not really completed the whole system and they're taking the little bits and pieces not, of it. Not totally. Sometimes what it is, they do the whole system too fast. Because people have to spend time on the foundation. It's like you gotta work on the Silum Tower. Silum Tower is everything. That's a textbook. So you gotta do everything in Wing Chun. But you gotta learn how to train properly. It's not just doing the form. It's about controlling your position, understanding where your mother line is, and understanding and identifying where your center line is. Because everybody has their own center line. You have yours, you have yours, you have yours. I have mine. So you have to know where yours is, right? That's the only way I could counter his. If I know where my sensor line is, I know he's trying, my sensor line is his attack line. So he wants to hit me there. So that, that's the basic game. All right, all right, he's, he wants to hit me on that line. I have to make it so it's hard and make it so it's easy for me to hit him on that line. So that's the game if you want to bare bones. Right. You know what I'm saying? But you can't do that from far away. You can't do that if you're trying to hit each other. Right. It's more chess. Right. So I have to try to adjust him without him knowing, see? He adjusted good, so he attacked right there, it's good. 
to try not to attack under. And then you learn to attack with an obstacle. That's not good. Right. When you attack, you want it to be clean. Boom. Right. Nothing in the way. You're always blocking. Gotcha. So don't get used to doing this. Because right. like, in reality, it's teaching me a bad habit. Because right. I'm punching and you're in the way. Right. Right. I'm punching and you're, like, you're in the way. You're clearly in the way. Why would I keep on punching? See, I, go, I do a little bit to see if you're blocking. That's enough. So, so I could go in this way. See, I'm clear. I don't, nothing in the way. I could hit. So then I clear this hand. Right. Right. So he put this in the way, I switch. Right. So I keep switching until I get no, nothing is in the way. Right. You see, so it becomes that. But again, even doing that, I'm moving my hips, I'm moving everything. You always have to move your whole body. It's, it's not just your arms. It's never just this. If it was just the arms, then I wouldn't have to move. You know what I'm saying? You have to adjust to the person. 